As some of you may know, over the summer I moved from living in Japan for nine years to the States. So the past few months I've been preoccupied with moving into our home, remodeling our house, and just in general adjusting to stateside life. For instance, we just got our living room furniture and have been able to sit on upholstered furniture for the first time in three months. But I have somehow managed to get a few things and I'd like to share them with you. <laughs> what is going on here? Well, this is the first thing I'd like to share with you. The company Coppertist Wu sent me this crab. Like his brother, the Penrest Snake, He's made of brass and very well done. Copper Tis Wu makes jewelry and novelty items, and if I was a little bit younger and a lot hipper, I would definitely be wearing their jewelry. He's heavy and very well detailed, and his eyes are made of sterling silver and are movable. He's primarily made as a pen holder, but can also hold sunglasses and phones. You can use him to hold a variety of things like scissors or other pens. I have a link in the show notes where you can go to their website and a discount code ALISA25 to get 25% off. Lately, I've been getting into brass desk accessories, but this little guy has been taking on a big personality. For instance, he jumped in to make sure I knew that he could hold on to his brother, the snake. I've taken to calling him Mr. Crab, and he shows up a lot more times in this video. I got this brass frog clip at the DC Pen Show from Esterbrook. Because he's solid and has a very wide opening, he's very useful and also will be showing up a lot in this video. Mr. Crab has inserted himself into this, and for some reason seems to be compensating for something. One of the coolest things I got at the DC Pen Show was the straw. I met up with Aziza from Gourmet Pens and Candice from Inks and Anchors and their cohorts, Chi and Sim. They are some serious pen enablers. I call them the Canadian Pen Mafia. Here's Aziza just randomly doing some ink art. I took Aziza's class and that straw was a really cool technique on how to splatter ink. It was a really fun class, and I'll be featuring Aziza and Candace later on on an ink video that I'll be doing. And later on in the video, I'll be sampling some of the ink that she gave me that's available on their shop. And they have a really fun Gourmet Pens podcast. Candace taught a doodling class, and it was really a great practical class. So many classes, you don't actually do anything, but these are things that I drew in her class. If you go to a pen show and have an opportunity to take one of their classes, I highly recommend it. They come super prepared and bring all the tools that you need and that you can keep and take home and use. For instance, this is the preppy that she gave out in class filled with Monteverde document black ink. I got this shark pen filled with Datramentis document black ink from a class called Intro to Visual Journaling by Tin Kim Lamb. The class also came with this mini watercolor palette and this mixed media notebook. Again, another well-prepared, well-taught class where you learn to just, well, trust your instincts and add some illustrations to your journaling. I didn't have any paper on me at the DC Pen Show, so I went to the Esterbrook table and got this Esterbrook and Biddy Soldi collaboration notebook. The flyleaf has some interesting history on the Esterbrook Company, and then there's a table of contents on the inside, here where you can list subject and page numbers because the pages are numbered. And the backside has a pocket. I'll be doing a lot of the ink testing for the inks that I bought in this notebook. It looks like there's some stickers back here I didn't know about. Well, the paper is a fountain pen friendly, and it has one of the prettiest bookmarks that I've seen in a notebook. Sim from the Canadian Pen Mafia had this cool Skogsy Pens pen case and drug me down to the Skogsy table to take a look at it. Inside it holds three pens and a place for a notebook and the material is kind of fuzzy to protect your pens. And showing excellent craftsmanship, the outside part of the pocket matches the inside. 
Sim very slyly and very kindly purchased this for me, but what that did was kind of oil the machinery and I was on this long, slippery slope of buying pens. Oh look, what's inside this pen case? Mmm, it's a Skogsy Chilya 14mm black canvas micarta pen with a number 8 Magna Carta nib. Micarta is a durable, lightweight material that is resin embedded fabric. It's pricey as it's a tedious process with multiple layers of fabric and curing. I was surprised to find out it's used a lot for knife handles. It's an incredibly tactile material and really fun to write with. It can stain and you can avoid that by like using the same ink and filling your converter with a syringe. But for many, including me, I really think it's a real feature of this pen. I inked this pen up with pink ink and deliberately left it lying around in some ink so it would stain. Here, after inking the pen with Tom's number 7 ink, I'm trying to get a little bit on the barrel. Even your hand oils will eventually darken the material a little bit, which I think is really cool. If you don't like that effect, you can wash it with soap and water or use alcohol pads and wipe it down and it'll lighten back up again. It's an incredibly smooth rider, but it's enhanced by the micarta, knowing that your hand oils are kind of like showing your use and it's got like a little bit of history of the different kinds of inks you use. It feels like you're kind of like using a real tool. Kirk Spear makes these beautiful laser engraved nibs and this one is a Bach. And he's like, Alisa, you really need to like try out more Bach nibs. So I bought this nib and he sent me over to the London Pen Company. This is a stainless steel italic with orchids engraved on it. The pen is a London Pen Company Nona 14. And it's made of an old Omos material, Aqua de Bologna. That cap must be something special because this pen just never dries out. I inked it up with Van Diemen's Encore Stage Fright ink, which I got at the Van Ness table at the DC Pen Show. Really, Van Ness is just great for all kinds of different inks. And the nib's a nice, smooth, wonderful writer, and the pen is very comfortable in hand besides looking gorgeous. And then Sean sent me over to Hello Tello. This is one of the companies that Candace was showing me earlier that she had gotten, and so I was interested in what he had. Look at this flash. This is also an old Omos acylate material that John calls Blue Teal Moon. This pen has an unusual short cap and an unusual section, which is surprisingly comfortable. The nib has an H for Hello Tello and an unusual insignia. It also has an ink window, even though you can use it as a cartridge converter. There really is no reason why a cartridge converter shouldn't have an ink window. It's pretty ingenious. This pen is the Oversize Venus Glass Murano Bead Pen. Why is it called a bead pen and why does it have that unusual insignia on the nib? because when you flip it over to the end cap, you see these beautiful glass Murano beads that have been individually hand laid. Each pen is truly one of a kind. Beautiful, unusual, and functional. My kind of pen. An incredibly kind friend of mine gave me this Sean Newton Prospector in Jonathan Brooks Sea Glass. Prospectors are cool because they have this very clear-cut triangle on the end that is blended down into a rounded pen in the middle. This one has a titanium size 8 nib, which is a very juicy rider. And then he enticed me over to the Sean Newton table where I got a small size Sean Newton Prospector. This is in flower garden material. It's kind of unusual for me to get like such a multicolored but very beautiful pen. Here's a comparison of the small and normal size Prospector. The triangles on the ends seem to be about the same size, it's just a difference in length. 
I switched out its nib and instead put in a Regalia Writing Labs Cross Flex Polished Nib. My friend Lisa told me that Ralph was at the DC Pen Show and I was so surprised to see him there. And he was there analyzing people's handwriting. So he had you write out a few sentences and stuff and then he adjusted your nib. Many people don't know that Ralph, along with being a great nibsmith, is also great at calligraphy and handwriting. So I inked up the small prospector with Ralph's nib in it in an ink called Octopus Fluids Fairy. I also got this at the Van Ness table at the DC Pen Show. And all I can say is, wow, the ink, pen, and nib was just a great combo. Also at Sean Newton's table, I got this hilarious pen roll. It's a bunch of skeleton pirates doing piratey kind of things, just in time for Halloween. Rose Studio was at the DC Pen Show with her beautiful hand-painted pens. I don't use a lot of small pens, but this one was too pretty to pass up. She also has beautiful hand-painted notebook covers, and I've just never seen anything like this before. But the absolute kicker is this mermaid pen. She made really beautiful use of this Italian resin. Look at the color and fine detail here. It just melts in that acrylic like water. This is a Rose Studio stub nib. This model WP4 is very comfortable in hand. And one of the things I love about this pen is that it has a screw-in converter. And it writes beautifully and smoothly, even with a shimmer ink. This is Tom Studio number 70 Shimmering Ink Kingfisher that I got at Yoseka Stationery Fest. Rose Studio will be at the Tokyo International Pen Show here in a couple of weeks. A very special friend of mine decided that my friend, me, and Jacob of Fudafan should have matching pens. And he picked this jaw dropper. This is a Namiki Yukari Makie eye needle pen. You can see the detailed Makie painting here along with the sprinkling of rod in. It has an 18 karat size 10 nib. And this beauty is an M. Here it is under different light and you can see it just kind of glows. The two-tone Namiki nib is just fabulous to write with. For such a beautiful pen, it's kind of a no-nonsense writer. It's smooth, it's agile, it's a very great everyday kind of writer. Thank you, Mr. M. With such beautiful pens, you need something beautiful to put them in. At the DC Pen Show, I was surprised to see a table with old Japanese lacquerware. This box is just beautiful to have, but it's extra better that you could keep pens in it. The lady that owns Pen House takes these old Japanese lacquer boxes and turns them into pen cases. This one is a nine slot one. She basically builds these little velvet inserts to go inside these lacquer boxes. And as you can see, they're pretty thick and substantial. She comes every year to the DC Pen Show and sometimes to the Baltimore Pen Show. These are vintage lacquer boxes that she gets from Japan and they were very, very reasonably priced. This rooster box was made by the very famous company Zohiko. Here's their insignia on the back. This one was not made to be a pen case, but I got it because again, they're very reasonably priced and beautiful. And so I thought maybe I could put pen accessories in here. Who would have thought that I would move back from Japan and then find a really great source for lacquerware here in the States. Now many people go to the Washington DC pen show to get vintage pens. And this year I kind of didn't get into it too much. But what I did get was this Warren Penny pen. It came in a pack of three and it is considered by many people to be the first disposable pen. It's new old stock from the 1890s. The dip pen body is made of rolled up paper and the nibs are fixed inside of this so you can't replace it. Therefore, it's kind of like a disposable pen. 
Dan Wibble bought this building, which is now called the Wibble Building, and inside were just like boxes and boxes of leftover worn penny pens. So we'll check out Octopus Fluids Write and Draw Waterproof Green Eagle Ink with this worn penny pen. <laughs> The pen was fabulously flexible and the ink was smooth and easy to work with and turned out to be incredibly waterproof. My snake pen holder said, yeah, I can be a dip pen rest too. And then Mr. Crab said, I can hold the pen. But my absolutely favorite pen this year is Snowy Studios Memento Zero Dragon Heart. It's a limited edition and it uses exclusive Jonathan Brooks material. This is the box it comes in and it's an absolute stunner. I don't have a lot of red pens in my collection so this really filled in a gap besides just being beautiful. Here you can see the kanji that's also used with Clarissa's name, Snowy Studio, and it means courage along with Leonardo and the number 093 on the back. I like that the cat band has gold rings along with the body. It's a kind of finishing touch to the pen. And look at this nib. It's a 1.1 14 karat gold stunner. Here it is in a different light. You can get it in a steel nib, but I opted for the gold because it was the whole dragon thing for me. And here again, you can see the stunning material. I wanted to get this pen because the dragon year is kind of an interesting lunar year and the whole red and gold and sparkling just really fit in with that. And again, here you can see that kanji. I thought I didn't like red very much, but now I found out I just love it. One of the things my friends know about me is I just love, love, love blotting paper. I put it in all my journals. It's a great way to be able to, be able to write really quick and then slam your book shut. I use it everywhere. And at the DC Pen Show, Esther Book just had a bunch of really cool blotting paper. Each pack came with three designs and then two sheets of paper that were smaller that you could use for smaller journals, like cut them up. And you know you've hit Blotta Nirvana when you've got dinosaurs. And then they had these really cool pen cases that were kind of like a cup. And inside there were these hard-sided dividers that were covered in fuzzy material to protect and separate your pens. Cup itself sits nicely on a table, but then you can roll it up, close it up, and then make it a portable pen case. It's actually quite handy so that when you go somewhere, you can have like a little pen cup. It's made of leather and kind of soft material and then kind of a denim material on the outside. I ended up liking this a lot more than I thought I would. I was going to show you a little bit about the Alchemy Dreams of Atlantis ink by Endless, but it kind of got away from me. I did go see the Stationery Fest by Yoseka this August. I got to meet up with a lot of my friends from Japan and get a few things. The opening day long lines were real, but they corrected for it very quickly and had just a really great staff and it was a very well run show. Got a lot of cool LCN stuff. I got this tip about putting washi tape on the front and back so you can peel the backing off of pet tape from all the hobbies on Instagram. As usual, this LCN tape is gorgeous. And then I used this multicolor stamp pad from Shachihata to use one of the LCN stamps. Since the whole Tomoa River kerfluffle, I've been experimenting with different kinds of paper and I've found I really like some really rough kind of like textured paper. This is from Atelier Ecluse. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's all 100% cotton hand laid paper. It has a slightly rough texture and a real handmade feel. I'm dropping Octopus Fluids Waterproof Ink here. 
ride quite nicely. It seems to handle large amounts of liquid very well. It has varying degrees of success for whether or not it feathers. It doesn't really bleed through the other side. You need a fairly wet pen to be able to write really well on this. Handles watercolor, pencil, and markers really well. And my LCN stamp came out great. Blation had their really beautiful olive ink and their cool City Bridges masking tape. I went to Jenny Bix in downtown DC with CY and his wife Akane from Cusado. I'll be doing a video about them later on this year. But there I got this cool ink archiving book from Dominant Industry. Inside is all kinds of ways you can kind of swatch or play with your ink. There's a lot of artists work in there. It's a really different take from just your straight up swatching, though they do have swatching pages in the back, but I really like this approach. I, I am crab. Okay, that's it. Back in the box you go. As I was saying, I really like the idea that you can play with your inks in other ways than just swatching. When I met Aziza at the DC Pen Show, she gave me eight of her different kinds of ink that she offers on her shop. So I did swatch them. There's a section in the back which has kind of traditional ink swatching pages where you've got squares and then lines that you can write about the ink. I added a couple other inks to the page and it came out really nice. You can do whatever you want on these other pages, but what I ended up doing was just tracing the smaller picture and then kind of making a two-tone kind of watercolor and ink, I don't know, blended paper here. Just because I liked kind of doing that and adding a couple little extra drops here and there. I added the name of the ink and then I was done. So it was fun and easy and I really liked the end result. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I should have another one out in about two weeks. Now, where did that crab go?